Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, and we are specifically going to talk about when the heroes, the player character heroes, are chased away by the villagers. I've never seen this happen before. It's one of the most shocking things I've ever had occur to one of my player characters, uh, but I think I, I, I was really... As a dungeon master, you should be ready, able, and capable of shocking your players. And this happened to me as a player character recently, and I wanted to share the tale with you so that you have the ability to do this for your players, right? Because we need to keep our players on our toes. If they know what's coming next, uh, they can get bored, go play video games, go watch a million amazing streaming shows, go read the uh, one of the 100,000 amazing books that are out there, or they could get stolen by another local dungeon master. All right. So I was playing in uh, the Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition Obsidian campaign of a good friend of mine, Helen. Um, at my Sunday game, I have uh, quite a few players, and they are all incredibly... Actually, we're really blessed. We don't really have players anymore. We have dungeon masters who drop into the player seat, right? So everybody at our table is a skilled dungeon master. And all of those, uh, all of, um, all of those dungeon masters are, I would say, as good as me. And every now and then they, you know, they show me something, and I, I learn something. And I'm always getting, you know, iron sharpens iron, right? Uh, but Helen, it's not the same. I'm not at Helen's level. She's just a better dungeon master than me. She can do accents without offending people. Uh, she has better crafted stories than me. She's smarter than I am, and she's much more personable than I am, and has a much stronger. Um, she has much stronger, like, relationships with her with her players, right? Because she's generally a likable person. So I get to play in her game every now and then. And recently, uh, they had the, one of the players had stepped out for a for a season, and I, I stepped in, right? So I played in this game before. So game's taking place in Faerun. It's taking place um, a little bit north of Neverwinter. It's in the Neverwinter, and so our player characters are in the Neverwinter Woods, right below Mount Hope now, okay? And uh, we're coming through, and these goblins attack us while we're in the forest uh, it, it, near the Ho Mount, Mount Hope now, right? And we're like, oh my gosh, look at these goblins. They have, pr uh, you know, they have purple skin, right? And actually, um, they're not actually goblins, they're gobs. Um, again, because Helen's such a good dungeon master, she uses this term gobs, right? And they're like goblins, but they're fundamentally different, okay? Uh, they're the same size, but they have different colors and they have different powers, right? So they're purple. The, so we come across these purple gobs and um, they have blue glowing veins, right? So you could see the blood in them, right? So first of all, we're looking at, you know, it's nighttime and we're in the, you know, Neverwinter Woods and we see, the, you know, these blue, like, uh, lights surrounding us, and we're like, oh my gosh, what is this? And the gobs, you know, the purple gobs with blue veins, blue glowing veins, just come out and they attack our characters. And I'm like, oh no, right? So um, there's about six of, six of them, and we put them down. Now, my player character, I'm playing Beryl, the total, wiz uh, the total wizard folk hero. And you're like, wait, Scott, what, isn't Beryl dead? Yes, he is dead. I played him in our Sunday campaign, right? But I was so distraught when he was killed. It was deeply upsetting to me, right? And um, and then his and then his body got used. He was exhumed and carried to another. He was he was buried twice, right? But when I got this invite to come back into Helen's game, I was like, hey, could we? Would you, as a DM fiat, say that Beryl is resurrected? And she said, no, I will not. My player characters will come into your world <laughs> and remove Beryl's body. And I was like, what? And she's like, but guess what, Scott? You're going to have to witness it. And I said, what do you mean, witness it, right? And she said, you're going to have to just watch for a session or two while they rescue your player's body. And I was like, so I'm not going to get to play in the game? And she said, no, you're not. You're gonna watch while we rescue your bar. You know, if you want a player, if you want a player character raised, so you can play it in another campaign. You're gonna sit there and twiddle your thumbs and witness my real player characters bring your player character in our world. And I was like, Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? And she, and she's like, Yes. You still want in? And I was like, Yes, I do. <laughs> right. And the reason why is when I'm, you know, when I'm in Helen's game, I'm. Uh, She's the only person who makes me ashamed uh, of my game, like because her game is so her 
her level of play is just so high, right? So it's it's incredible, right? So I always learn at her table and I'm willing, right? So Barrel is Barrel, my turtle wizard, folk hero, is resurrected into her obsidian world, right? Uh, and actually, which is also on Faerun, right? Because who ain't using Faerun now? And, I, and the reason why is the Essentials Kit is amazing! If you're not on that, like, get on it. Uh, so, so basically, so we're like, hey, these purple gobs, you know. And so we slay the six purple gobs. And we're like, oh my gosh, you know, we know what this is. 20 months ago, uh, these, sa- these, purple gobl- these purple gobs, without the blue veins attacked a village three miles from here we better go go to them right away so we run over to to the village right and this village that had been attacked by gobs 20 months ago there uh we come in and we're like hey there's purple gobs out there and they're gonna come they're gonna come for your village soon and they're like yes we are aware of that and immediately the village elder comes he says come you know around the fire and we shall discuss and they're like last time you were here 20 months ago you slayed the purple gobs, and we paid you 500 gold. Sadly, and then he goes, uh, and you know, he says, hey, uh, Shazafrath, go count our gold. And they go count their gold, and they're like, we only have 160 gold. That's all we can give you to slay the, the purple gobs with blue veins, right? And so at this point, right, um, an old dragonborn stands up, and he said, no, you won't pay these adventurers one single gold coin like and me and the other player characters like wait what (laughs) we're like what's happening here (laughs) and he goes 20 months ago they came and they slew the purple gobs but then six months later the purple cobs came with glowing with with orange glowing veins and then the purple gobs came with gray glowing veins and now they're back with purple with, with with blue growing veins, right? And the reality is, each time we've scrabbled up all the coin this village has, and we've paid these horrible, you know, useless adventurers to do the same thing. But the problem we had 20 months ago is back, and it's adapted, and it's stronger. And I am sick to death of paying these adventurers to do the same thing. If we continue to have the same problem, and the problem comes back adapted and stronger, and we use the same stupid solutions, we will get the same result, right? He says, I will not be here when the purple gobs with, uh, uh, you know, he says, with white glowing veins arrive. He says, I won't be here for the next adapted, stronger version of these purple gobs, right? He says, this is it. The only solution is for us as a village, he says, to save ourselves. And then he pointed and he says, and you adventurers who took 500 gold from us 20 months ago to do nothing, you are to leave. And we're like, wait, wait, we can help you. And he's like, you cannot help us. Our only way that we will defeat this problem that began 20 months ago is for us to defeat it ourselves. We must grow a strength within our own village to save ourselves. The men and the women, he says, will band together. We shall gather every weapon we have, whether it be a sword or a hoe, uh, he says, or, you know, a garden hoe or um, a pitchfork for bailing hail, and we shall take care of these purple gobs ourselves, and we will grow the strength within our own village to be the heroes that we must be and there will be losses. But we will not use the same useless, stupid solutions to fight a problem that clearly has adapted and become stronger and now faces us again. For us to do the same stupid, useless solutions over and over again without uh, taking it upon ourselves to grow the strength within ourselves to defeat this menace is wrong. And all of us play, and, and he says, and I demand, and finally this, dragon, this old dragonborn says, I demand you leave this village at once and hang your head in shame for having taken the 500 gold from us to begin with. You are as useless as your tactics. And I was like, wow. Uh, you know, we all looked at each other. We're like, 
uh, we did take that 500 gold, right? The problem is right back. I guess it would be so foolish for them to hire us again, to give us all their gold again, and then have the same problem three months later in adapted, stronger, stronger version, right? I guess this menace really does need to be solved by them. We thought we were the we were the experts at goblin slaying, but the reality is everything we did didn't work out, and the goblins and you know and these purple gobs just came back adapted and stronger, right? So why on earth should they pay us? And we just slunk and you know hung our heads and slunk away. And so the lesson here is, and I was shocked. I had never seen. I've never had a player character kicked out of the village and said, you know, by the villagers. I'm saying. We don't need your help, right? We're going to do the right thing. We're going to do something new and innovative. We're not going to apply the same stupid, useless solutions to a problem that comes up again and again and again. We're going to try something new. And we, we really couldn't fight them. Like, they, they had a perfectly valid point, right? Helen is an amazing dungeon master. She shocked me with a new experience for my player character. And we you need to do the same thing. You need to keep your players on their toes. You need to make sure they don't know what you're doing next. Well, that's my opinion. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.